Hi guys, James here from the Mad Tin Hatter blog again. So I've been doing my state of the collection videos today and as I've been kind of putting in and taking out models from storage, getting them on the table etc, I thought it might be worth actually showing how I store uh, my Flames of War models. Um, there's a couple of different methods uh, that I use. Um, there's the method which I have here. Um, this is a really useful box, but I'll get back to that in a second. I also use these boxes, um, which are kind of A4 kind of size storage with uh, magnetic sheeting on the bottom, and then there's magnetic sheeting uh, on the bottom of the figures. One of the reasons that I base a lot of my vehicles is actually for that reason. Um, so if I put that in properly, hopefully if I can uh, tilt, you should see that these models aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Obviously if I was to pick the box up and shake it hard, they're going to end up damaged, but for day-to-day -day moving them about and things, this kind of style works. So, what I have in front of me here is a really useful box, um, commonly called a RUB, R-U-B. Um, this is a European 9 litre size one. I understand that the European and the US sizes might be slightly different, um, but this is a 9 litre uh, tub. Um, within this tub I have trays, four of them. These trays are from Sally Forth in the UK. Um, they are kind of the trays that they provide at different sizes. So I believe, if memory serves, these are 35 mil trays with an insert cut. Now they come flat packed so you assemble them and then what I've done is I've put in the tray the same magnetic sheeting. Um, it takes slightly more than an A4 sheet of magnetic sheeting so you need a little bit extra. Um, but for the 35mm you get four of them in one of these boxes. The boxes, the way they're set up, if you look at the lid, you can see the boxes stack quite neatly on top of each other. They've got these clippy sides to keep the, the lid on. They come in a couple of different colours. So one of the things I have been working towards is my German vehicles and artillery are actually in a black one. Um, and my allied stuff, currently I've got in a blue coloured one. And again, that just helps me when, I, when I'm looking for models, I kind of think, ah, my Germans are in the black one. My allied stuff's in the blue one. This one was just a kind of generic infantry box for me, so it is clear. You can see down the sides of inserts that it gives you some idea as to what's in it. You get four 30mm inserts, slightly bigger than A4 size. Um, the trays just lift out, they stack as you can see. Um, and you get quite a lot of models in them. And some of my British infantry. Um, so these two trays here more or less had all of these models stored in them, in two trays. What I found with the A4 boxes that I was using, these ones, is while they worked really well and they're good for tall guns and tanks and things, when it comes to infantry there's a lot of dead space. Um, the infantry aren't that tall so what you end up doing is filling a box, half filling a box basically, um, with a lot of blank empty storage. Whereas with these, you can see that while there is a little bit of dead space in them, it's not a huge amount. Um, so the fact that they're slightly bigger than A4, uh, they stack four, these size four to box. Um, the other sizes they do, I think, are 50 mil and 70 something mil. So for one of these boxes, you could get two 50 mil and a 35 mil in stacked or another combination, three of these 150 mil, I think it works out as, um, or, you know, to that effect. My maths is rubbish, take that as you will. But basically, these are really good. Um, they do do them in different sizes for different size boxes. Um, you can get really useful boxes that are, that are taller, um, the kind of larger ones. You also get them of various different sizes. I'm pretty sure Sally Forth would do trays for them. They come with inserts cut out like this or they come with the side solid. I like the cutout ones because it just lets you see what's in each layer without ta opening the box and taking layers out. And as I said, they just um, sit quite neatly on top of each other. Um, 
and no bother at all. So that's uh, Sally Forth that do these. I think other companies might have started doing them, but I couldn't tell you who. Um, really useful boxes and uh, some magnetic sheeting, some magnetic uh, stuff on the underside of the uh, bases. Um, I think you can do like magnetic and ferrous, but you have to watch. Just make sure whatever you get that you're consistent. So always use the same stuff on the tray and always use the same stuff on the bottom of the models. Make sure that um, it does actually stick. And it doesn't have to be absolutely solid, but enough to stop the models sliding about and rubbing together is enough. Um, I have actually started just recently. Um, I've been put on to war bases do uh, Flames of War size MDF 2mm bases that actually you can have a hole laser cut in them which will take a 2mm by 5mm magnet and the idea is that once you put the, the magnet in the hole, do your basing and stuff, uh, it'll just stick straight onto this um, stuff and not move about. Um, but it does require you to base your models, um, which isn't a bad thing because the guns are based, the infantry is based, the tank should be based, which means everything's the same height scale-wise. That's my logic anyway. So that's it, guys. Just thought I would cover that off while I was working on the rest of this uh, state of the collection today. Thanks very much.